Good evening, and welcome to Christ Lutheran Church. If you're wondering why I'm glowing up front here, don't be alarmed. It is the puppet black light that they'll use for their presentation later in the service. So we're very, very thankful that the puppet ministry team of Christ Lutheran Church are going to be sharing something very special with us later on. So we look forward to that. And if you're here for that, welcome. We welcome one and all. If you are a guest or visitor and would like to grab one of our visitor gift bags, if you haven't already done so, please do so. And we encourage you not only to do that, but always to join us and worship with us here at Christ Lutheran Church. As we gather together today, also there are several announcements that we have. We, uh, of course, with our Bethlehem walk coming up, uh, we would like for you to join us. And that is uh, this very weekend, in fact, and probably you got a clue about that when you came into the narthex today. Uh, a lot of very special things. Thank you to Tammy and to all of our volunteers that made that so very special. Uh, and that will take place beginning, I believe, at 6 tomorrow. And then, if I remember right, at 9 on 10 o'clock. If you get there 9, you're going to be early. So 10 o'clock on Saturday. Maybe I was thinking I'd come out at 9. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, it is 10 o'clock on Saturday. So uh, please uh, join us for that. And that goes until... 2 on Saturday, and when tomorrow? 6 to 8 tomorrow. It's kind of like a sneak peek uh, that we have on Friday. So uh, please do join us for that. It's going to be very special. I'm glad Tammy's here to kind of help me with the times because I don't have it in the newsletter right in front of me. So as we gather together today, also a uh, reminder of some of the things coming up. I know you're here in church tonight. But if you should happen to come on Sunday, we have some other amazing things. Uh, at 9.15 on Sunday, we have our Guatemala uh, mission team uh, that was on a mission trip there. It's going to be sharing about that trip, and that's 9.15 in the fellowship hall on Sunday. And also after the worship services, we're going to have Christmas decorating that will take place after our contemporary worship service. Uh, there's a lot of upcoming things that are uh, on the horizon. A Christmas cookie walk and craft sale on the 10th of December. We also have a lot of Christmas parties and Christmas services. So be sure and check your newsletter for all of those things. If you didn't get that, you should be able to grab one in the back of the church as you leave today. Uh, and we encourage you to take that home with you so you can remember all of those dates as well. And one last thing, Happy New Year. <laughs> it is our church New Year as we get ready for this season of Advent. And with this first Sunday in Advent coming up, it really struck me that in the Gospel lesson, which happens to be the same Gospel lesson that we have for Palm Sunday, a lot of things just all come together in one place, including looking at the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And actually, the second petition of the Lord's Prayer is actually very much a part of that. And we'll get into that uh, for this sermon. Uh, but uh, as we gather together this evening, we're so very blessed as we enter this new year with God's Word. And God's Word can do amazing things in our lives. God's Word gives us power for each and every day, especially to trust in our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so let us gather our thoughts and our hearts in prayer as we prepare to worship this evening. We pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that you would bless us and that you would help us to see his coming, both as we remember his coming uh, to Bethlehem as he was born as a tiny baby, uh, his coming into Jerusalem as he triumphantly rode in, his coming to be our Savior on the cross. And even as we look forward to his coming on the last day, help us not forget that he comes to us also right here and now in your holy word. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's get ready now to sing our opening hymn. We invite you to stand as we sing the Advent of our King.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. Upon this, your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins, doing so in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we sing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Thank you all very, very much. You are so talented, and what a beautiful message, and very beautifully done. Uh, thank you so much to our Christ Lutheran puppets for sharing Count Your Blessings with us. And certainly, we count them among our blessings in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we turn to God's Word together today, we look at our Old Testament reading from Isaiah chapter 64, which reads as follows. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear, no eye has seen a God besides you who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry and we sinned. In our sins we have been a long time and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O oh Lord, you are our father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not our iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We invite you to stand now for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord is need of it, and we'll send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, What are you doing, untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessing, blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. We invite the young people of the congregation forward for the children's message. You can come on up and have a seat right up here. Very good. Well, I have a very big children's message here. So 
So what is that? Jar. It's a big jar, it's pottery, it's, I guess you could say, a big vase. Look how, the, how big it is. And as I look at this big piece of pottery, I happen to know where it comes from. It was actually made by one of my sons in art class at school. He must have used a pottery wheel to get it to be the way that it is. That's something that I never even have done, is have the opportunity to work with a pottery wheel. Well, of course, if it's pottery, what is it made out of? Do you know? Well, they take something called clay. And if you ever use Play-Doh, you get the idea of what clay is, of course, right? So this is made from clay, which starts out very, very soft, very pliable. You can create something with your hands. You don't even need a pottery wheel. I, in my office, I have another uh, little uh, pencil jar that one of my sons also made with clay. And in our first Bible reading that we heard today, we heard something about God. Did you catch that? It said that God is the potter and that we are the clay. I want to talk about what that means. So I remember, though, even though I didn't use a pottery wheel, being in art class, and we would take that clay, and we'd mix it with water till it was just the right consistency, and then we would try to make a pot with it. And being new to pottery, myself, sometimes it didn't work out right away. Sometimes the clay didn't do what I wanted it to do, and it didn't look very good. So what do you think I did at that point? Did I just take the clay and say, oh, am you worthless clay, I'm just going to throw you away. No, I didn't do that. Well, I didn't talk like that when I was that age, for one thing. But I knew that I could take that lump of clay, and if it didn't work out right the first time, I could shape it into a ball, and then I could make it into something new. And that's exactly what I did. And so when, when the Bible says that God is like a potter and we are like the clay, that reminds us when we disobey God and mess up in our lives, God doesn't forget about us. He doesn't just throw us out. But he's able to take us and form us and make us new, especially because he sent us a Savior, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross so that our sins could be washed away. And, and we could be in God's hands, both now and always in heaven, and be loved by him. And, and when God gets a hold of us, amazing things truly do happen as he makes us new, as he makes us into his works of art. So let's have an echo prayer. And if you could repeat after me, if the congregation can help out, that would be great. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for making me new so that I can be formed into something new in your Father's hands, now and always. Amen. Thank you. You can go back to your seat, and we'll continue with our next hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, all men, dearest brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. We had a good Thanksgiving, especially the day after Thanksgiving, when my daughter Clarissa and her husband Stephen came over for our Thanksgiving dinner. One crucial component of their visit was that they brought along their new dog named Whiskey. <laughs> and he joined us for Thanksgiving too, you could say. And when that happened, it reminded me of what Martin Luther said as recorded in his table talks. Martin Luther had visitors for dinner one day, and his puppy, his puppy, Martin Luther had a puppy. I think that's good to know. Martin Luther had a puppy, and he happened to be there at dinner one day, and he just said to all of the people that were eating there as he was watching his puppy, who was looking for a morsel from his master, and Martin Luther said, Oh, if I could only pray the way that dog looks at that piece of meat. All of his thoughts are concentrated on that piece of meat. Otherwise, he has no thought, no wish, no hope. If we could pray to God looking to him that way, what an amazing thing it would be. And so, as we got ready for our visitors this last Thanksgiving, it was a matter of getting the house into shape. I know some of you maybe can relate to that. And we were cleaning the house, and it was my job to clean the bathrooms. And it reminded me of the days when I was in college, and I worked at the college where I went, and I had to clean all the bathrooms there at Concordia, Wisconsin. It was quite a job, let me tell you. Getting ready for visitors is a lot of work, but it's also joyful and happy work as we await their arrival. Now, as you and I find ourselves at the beginning of this brand new church year, we realize that we have some getting ready work to do too, and it is joyful getting ready work as we think about the meaning and, and the season of Advent, of being a time of working and waiting and preparing for a lot of things. One quirk of the church calendar that we go by so we don't, like, pick our readings out of thin air, but we have a schedule of readings so that we can cover all of the Bible and all of the teachings of the Bible in the time span of three years. And when they chose the readings for this first Sunday in Advent, or in our case, this first Thursday in Advent, it's the same exact reading as for Palm Sunday. Now, Palm Sunday in our church year is also called the Sunday of the Passion because also we look at the passion or the suffering and death of Jesus. It's the beginning of Holy Week. On that Friday, we remember how Jesus died on the cross on the very first Good Friday. So all of these things in, in, in our gospel lesson for today are swirling around. We're thinking about the coming birth of Jesus Christ. We're thinking about how he entered into Jerusalem. We're thinking about how he died on the cross. And we're also thinking about how Jesus will come back on the last day. In all of these things, in all of these ways of returning, of coming back, of coming over for a visit, Jesus does so as a king, bringing a kingdom with him. And what kind of kingdom is this? Well, as we look at Palm Sunday, what a strange way that was for a king to be coming. It all began when Jesus sent two of his disciples ahead to 
to get a colt, a donkey's colt, to be his ride. And it all happened just the way Jesus said it would. And they said the things that Jesus told them to say. And lo and behold, they were on the way into Jerusalem, Jesus riding the donkey. And who met them? Who met Jesus on the way into Jerusalem? No reporters, no foreign dignitaries, no barricades and police, no soldiers and jeeps, no VIPs, just everyday people like you and like me. And even the poorest of them could put on the road in front of Jesus their cloak or some branches that they cut from the field. We call them palm branches. They were just branches that people found. It was a simple and a humble act of adoration, of reverence, of worship. Jesus entered as a king, but not with chariots and horses of war, but in such a way that made it clear that he was a king who brought peace to his coming kingdom. And he also brought with him the hopes and the dreams and the thoughts and the wishes of the people. Thoughts and wishes and hopes for peace and deliverance and salvation from oppression and from the turmoil that they experienced in their lives each and every single day. And so they shouted out. They shouted out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest! Hosanna is a beautiful word. It means save now, Lord. They longed for the peace and security of David's kingdom. Remembering a golden age when the people of Israel were relatively faithful and free from foreign troubles, free from unwise and unkind and ungodly rulers. How worrisome and troublesome their lives seemed now in comparison to those glory days of long ago. And we understand those feelings too, don't we? Do you understand those feelings that they felt? Because we too, in our lives and in our nation, wish that things were different. I think most people do. There are so many troubling things we hear on the news. And we may find that we might long for the glory days of not so long ago, Maybe recent and newer generations feel the pain of a more difficult experience than your parents had when they were growing up. Maybe we long for life before 9-11, or before Vietnam, or before income taxes were permanently legalized on the, the, in the 16th Amendment in the year 1913, two years before my grandmother, who is now 102 years old, was born. We long for those kind of things. We wish that we could have them. Imagine no taxes. So what kind of kingdom would you make for yourself? Hmm? What kind of kingdom would you make for yourself if you could do such a thing and have any kind of kingdom that you wanted? It's fun to imagine it. But as wonderful as such a kingdom might be in a perfect world, we realize from history that whenever people build their own kingdoms, large or small, they build those kingdoms around themselves. We tend to want a kingdom where we come out on top. That is about me, myself, and I.
There have been many attempts to build personal kingdoms, personal empires. History is full of the shock waves and after effects of people who have sought to impose their own will on others, who have thought that the end justifies the means, who have oppressed and mistreated and taken advantage at every opportunity and have laid waste to the lives of others, all in the name of building a kingdom, even if they haven't called it a kingdom, per se. So what is this kingdom that Jesus now comes to bring? Coming as a visitor, yet coming as one of us, coming as true God, but also true man, coming as our Lord and our Savior. This is a question that jumps out at us from our text when it says, blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. So what does the kingdom of Jesus look like? What is the kingdom of God all about? And then I thought of a prayer that we pray so often, maybe thousands of times already. The Lord's Prayer. And the words, thy kingdom come. What, what on earth is that all about anyway? Well, some of you I've had in confirmation, and maybe you remember also in Tammy's class, going over the Lord's Prayer, Remember the words of Luther. The kingdom of God certainly comes by itself without our prayer, but we pray in this petition that it may come to us also. And then Luther asks, how does God's kingdom come? And then he said, God's kingdom comes when our heavenly Father gives us his Holy Spirit so that by his grace. We believe in his holy word and lead godly lives here in time and there in eternity. So let's unpack those words and, and talk about what they mean and, and think about the coming of God's kingdom into our lives. First of all, what is God's kingdom? When you and I hear the word kingdom, we think of a, a geographic or um, political entity perhaps, like the United Kingdom, for example, Great Britain. But Jesus' kingdom is both more simple and more profound than that. And here's what it is. Quite simply, God's kingdom is wherever Jesus rules. That makes it pretty simple and pretty clear and very powerful. You see, Jesus doesn't want to just rule the universe. <laughs> Ruling the universe in his kingdom of power is not enough for Jesus because he cares about you personally and wants to rule in your heart and in your life as well. To oversee your thoughts and your words and your actions so that all of these are good and pure and holy, and so that in the end your life bears witness to his love and his peace and his grace. And to the forgiveness of sins that Jesus gained for you and for all people through his suffering, death, and resurrection. And so as the Gospel of Mark begins, he doesn't even talk about the birth of Jesus. Can you believe that? He talks about how John the Baptist prepared the way for Jesus. And then he has the very first words of Jesus as Jesus began his ministry. And what do you suppose he talked about? Do you think it was the kingdom? The kingdom of God? If that's what you think, you are right. He said, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Jesus was not an earthly king such as we are used to, but he came in an even greater way to rule in our hearts and in our lives, to transform us with the good news of the gospel. 
And he ushered in this kingdom at his birth, and, and when he triumphantly rode into Jerusalem, and when he wore the crown of thorns on the cross, and when the sign above him read the king of the Jews. And that's how he brought in his kingdom. But what about us? And the second question is, how does God's kingdom come to us? In the catechism that our congregation's confirmation students receive, it says this. We ask God to give us his Holy Spirit so that we believe his word and lead godly lives as members of his kingdom of grace. That's a summary, putting in other words, of what Luther already said in his explanation. In the book of Colossians, we see that God the Father has accepted us for the sake of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. And here is how it is described. In the book of Colossians chapter 1, it says, He has qualified you to share in the inheritance of saints in light. He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son. What a gift of grace that is. We are brought into God's kingdom by believing. In Jesus Christ and this faith itself is a gift that is given to us by the power of the Holy Spirit so now if you ever wonder in life where you fit in if you ever wonder in life where you truly belong you have a place with God in his kingdom that is permanent because it lasts into eternity with God you belong because of Jesus. How can we be sure of this? How can we know it's for certain in this uncertain world in which we live? How do we know that God's kingdom comes to us when we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ? And the answer is clear. As we look at the words of Luther once again, we see what he's leading up to. God's kingdom comes when our Heavenly Father gives us his Holy Spirit so that by his grace we believe his Holy Word. There you have it. It comes to the Word of God. God establishes and upholds his kingdom through his Word. And you know what? is true about God's word. Isaiah 55, 11 says this, so shall, and it is God speaking to us, it says, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. It's like we spoke in the children's message. God in his word has the power to work in our lives after we mess up. God is not done with us yet. When we give up, God is not done with us yet. But he is still working by the power of his spirit through his word because he desires above all else for you to be with him in his kingdom both now and forever to belong with him. To know his love. To be his family. And so when we pray that prayer in the Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come. Don't skip over those words. But make that your prayer. Advent does mean coming. And as we make that our prayer, and as we pray for God's kingdom, let us remember Jesus' birth. 
And let us look forward to celebrating it on Christmas. Let us remember Jesus' kingly entrance on Palm Sunday into Jerusalem as well as his humble death on the cross. And let us ever pray, thy kingdom come with all of the certainty that comes to us from God's word so that our eyes of faith may be focused on and firmly fixed on our Savior, our Lord, our Master Jesus, who comes to us, who is here with us right now in his precious word and the precious meal that we share together. Amen. Let us now stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we worship God through our offerings and through our, through our prayers, through offering to him our whole lives that are made new because we have been brought into his kingdom. We invite you to stand as we join our hearts together as brothers and sisters in Christ and praying the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their needs, Lord, you have given us the stars as markers of days and seasons, and we thank you for bringing us to the beginning of a new church here. Keep us faithful as we move through its observances and celebrations. May we gather often to hear the proclamation of your Son and receive the gifts you so freely bestow upon us. Lord, in your mercy. We do not know the time the Son of Man will come. That knowledge belongs only to you, O Lord. Keep us wakeful, watchful, and ever ready for his arrival so that we, along with all your faithful people, may be gathered from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of all nations, as we await the full coming of your promised kingdom, be with all who make and minister and judge our laws. May they use the authority that you have given them wisely and according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, you are our Father. Hide not your face from us. Look with kindness, especially on all that we care about and all that we name before you right now. Indeed, we pray for all who cry out to you in any time of need. According to your will, give healing to the sick, comfort to those who mourn, and perseverance to those who suffer for the sake of your name. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, even as we await your coming in glory, you come to us in the here and now and the bread and wine that is the body and blood of your Son. May all who approach your table today receive the sacrament worthily so that with sins forgiven and faith strengthened, your people will lack no gift as they await the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated and are invited forward to the sacrament of the altar this evening. We invite you to stand for the blessing. May this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We remain standing now as we sing our final hymn, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. After the hymn is brothers and sisters in Jesus and our Savior's love, greet one another and may God be with you and grant you his peace, always his peace that passes understanding. 